the Cavaliers have the worst record in the league but they also have the worst point differential in the league, more than 2 points per 100 possession worse than anyone else. Sorry if that put was misleading. You have to stay creative to find bright spots for the Suns, but this is certainly one, Kelly Oubre Jr. has been giving Phoenix some nice minutes and the Suns are outscoring opponents when he's on the floor with DeAndre Ayton and Devin Booker. The Knicks haven't been winning much lately but, on the bright side, Kevin Knox just had a run of 12 straight games scoring in double figures. Since the beginning of December, he's averaging 16.4 points, 5.6 rebounds and 1.4 assists per game, shooting 38.0% on three-pointers. The Bulls have been increasingly respectable on defense with Laurie Markkinen and Wendell Carter Jr. in the front court. Now if they could just put some points on the board with that pairing, they might actually be in business. Point three point shooting numbers for Nikola Vucevic and Aaron Gordon have fallen off in the past few weeks and the Magic look more and more like they may have to start selling some pieces at the trade deadline. Can they interest anyone in a lightly used Jonathan Isaac? Since John Wall left the lineup for season-ending surgery, the Wizards are 3-2 without a Porter Jr. Averaging 26.5 points, 8.0 rebounds, 4.9 assists, 1.8 steals and 1.8 blocks per 36 minutes over his last three games since returning from injury. Coincidence. The Hawks actually have a winning record over their last 10 games, coinciding with a nice hot shooting streak from Trey Young. He's still been dishing over 7 assists per game, but has also 18 of his last 33 three-pointers. When the Pistons made a trade for Blake Griffin last winter, they sent the message that they intended to rock this core until the wheels fell off. The wheels are officially off. Since the beginning of December, they're 5-14 with the fifth worst point differential in the league. It was fun while it lasted. The Grizzlies have a point differential of zero in the 32 clutch minutes Jaron Jackson Jr. has played. The five Grizzlies with more clutch minutes than him all of have negative differentials in double digits. Why can't he play in crunch time again? The Kings may have a better record than a few of the teams in front of them but their point differential is quite a bit worse. 538 currently gives the Kings just a 3% chance of making the playoffs but everything is still looking up in Sacramento. The Mavericks have hit a rough patch and, unfortunately, the return of Dirk Nowitzki may have a lot to do with it. The team's bench had gotten into a nice rhythm and been a real source of strength. Since he rejoined the team, Dallas is being outscored by an average of 19.1 points per 100 possessions with Dirk on the floor. They still have a positive differential when he's on the bench. The Timberwolves have actually been playing much better since the Jimmy Butler trade but it wasn't enough to save Tom Thibodeau from a fire, mostly of his own setting. This could be the beginning of some changes in a positive direction, remaking the team for a more positive future. Or it could be the harbinger of more chaos. The Nets have been as hot as anyone lately, winning 7 of their last 11 games with D'Angelo Russell and Spencer Dinwiddie combining for 35.3 points, 12.7 assists and 5.8 rebounds per game. If Karis Levert returns during the regular season they'll have a really solid chance of breaking into the playoffs. A few weeks ago, the Heat looked dead in the water but they've surged back into clear playoff position, outscoring opponents by an average of 5.9 points per 100 possessions over the past three weeks. Justice Winslow is finally asserting himself and a new course is being charted. All you really need to know to understand the Pelicans' predicament, they outscore opponents by an average of 5.8 points per 100 possessions when he's on the floor. They get outscored by an average of 5.6 points per 100 possessions when he's on the bench. Next, 15. Portland Trailblazers page to use your arrows to browse Portland OR, January 5th, Damian Lillard. Note to user, user expressly acknowledges and agrees that, by downloading and or using this photograph, user is consenting to the terms and conditions of the Getty Images License Agreement. 
mandatory copyright notice, copyright 2019 NBA E, photo by Sam Forensic, NBA E via Getty Images, the Trailblazers have continued winning games, especially over the past few weeks, but in less than inspiring fashion. Across this 7-4 stretch, their per 100 possession point differential was just 0.5. Across the entire season, it's at 1.2, behind the Lakers, Hornets, Rockets, Clippers, Jazz and Pelicans. They've won two more games than we'd expect for a team with their point differential this season and that two-game margin is the difference between being tied for 6th in the West, where they are now, and being tied for 8th with Lakers. The Blazers have been very good in close games, with an 11-8 record in games that were within 5 points at any point in the final 5 minutes. That solid clutch record might help them secure a better playoff seed but it's also an indicator of a team that may not be able to sustain the same performance across a larger sample, like multiple playoff series. Next, 14. Los Angeles Lakers use your arrows to browse.